Hi. So a while ago, somebody on YouTube asked me how you can make a trail like in Geometry Dash within Godot. So you can see here, I replicated the uh, rainbow trail and a bit of how the jumping works roughly in Geometry Dash. This is just a simple tile map design. One tile map for regular collision, one for dangerous stuff, spikes, though I haven't given them any actual collision. So currently I could just jump into them. It doesn't matter. A player camera, which only follows the player if it goes out of a certain distance. This way it doesn't shake around all the time while you are jumping. This doesn't matter. I don't need a second trail. The actual trail, which is basically a line to D. And the player, which is made up of the sprite, currently the Godot symbol. A collision shape, kinematic body of course and two ray casts to check if you are connected to the floor in any place. It's a bit more precise, especially with jumping and stuff, than the is on floor method uh, within Godot. So if we go in here, we can see the code when it doesn't have any of the new features yet. So basically it just has the, it has its sprite, which we want to be able to rotate. And then whenever we touch the floor, we just reset the sprite to a multiple of 90 degrees. So we just round it, round it a bunch. Simple jumping, nothing special happening here, using move and slide, and collision checking for the raycasts. Now how do we add the trail to this? Let's go in here, save whatever I did here, I don't know, close this, uh, close that too, close this as well, I only need this. So here's the player without any tail on it. So let's create a line to D. I'll put it here above the player so it's easily visible. Call it trail. And let's give the trail a bit of a design because currently it doesn't look like anything. To be able to test this, I'll just add a few points to it. So we got an idea of what it looks like. Let's make this bigger. I'll go with 40, I think. Okay, so the edges are a bit sharp. Let's make them round. Let's see, where is that? That is here. Rounded corners, no problem. Joints look a bit nicer now. Further, I would like this to have a gradient on it. Become transparent at the end. Uh, let's make this white, but transparent. Also, let's start the transparency a bit later so i'll just move that to over here and now most of it keeps its full non-transparent colors the last bit turns more transparent of course you can adjust the transparency however you like i don't really care it might look even a bit better if it's a little transparent from the start but you can adjust this however you like and it'll be fine uh, yeah let's keep that then we want a texture on here so I have a texture. I have a texture right here. Let's show it. Let's go into edit so we can see what the texture looks like. It's basically just a transition through the color space with a few pixels. This one's 64 by 45, but it doesn't have to be exactly that. Just, you know, something, something that fits into your game. I'll put this into the texture field here and add the stretch mode. And now everything already looks pretty similar to the way it does inside of Geometry Dash. Okay, but it doesn't follow the player yet. Right now this is just a trail that is here. So since I want to keep this visible in the editor, what I'll do is I will clear it out in the ready function here in a sec. On ready var trail equals get parent dot get node trail. That way we know where it is and can access it. Let's go into ready, clear all the points out, and with that it should be gone if I run the game. There we go, it still exists somewhere, but it's not visible. This way we can now add points to it freely from zero. Let's go into the process function, and I actually would like to not add a point every single frame. So to account for the amount of time passing, I'm just going to keep track of how large the delta value is. So, trail. Delta equals 0, 0.0 at the start. Don't, I don't care, whatever. Now, trail delta plus equals delta. Now we know exactly how much time passed since we 
last added a point to the trail. If trail delta is bigger than, now we need the number that represents how often this happens. So if we do 1.0 divided by some number, then that's how many times per second a point will be added. I'm just gonna do 30, because I think it looks fine with uh, 30 points per second, but you can adjust this however you like. Trail.add point global position, because basically we want uh, to add a new point to the end of the trail, to the, to the right basically, which has our current position, so that's where it's going to show up. Since it's not a child of the player, we can use global position safely without worrying about anything. Now, at which position we want it to be at the end of the list, so we just say length of trail points, and that gives us a new location at the end of the list. Uh, not underscore, it's a dot. There we go, that works. Okay, so in this case, we are adding a new point. What else happens here? We also want to see if we need to remove a point. We don't want the trail to just that get longer and longer infinitely, we want to remove any points that get too far away. So if length of trail.points is greater than, and I'm gonna go with 20 points at a time, adjust this length however you like, trail.remove point at location zero, because that's the first one in the list, and thus the oldest one. This takes care of that stuff, of course we still need to reset delta, so set that back to 0.0. .0. So it can start back counting up to a 30th of a second again. Okay, this should for the most part work, but there's still going to be a bit of glitchy behavior near the player, since it doesn't update instantly. Let's take a look what it looks like right now. We can't actually see it right now, because it updates quickly enough. So technically, if you're not going to change the code very much around, it's probably fine like this already. But just in case, I want to be precise and say, if we are not adding any point, we are moving set point position, length of trail dot points minus one, so the last existing point, we move to global position. This way, if we move very quickly, we won't suddenly lose the trail behind us for a fraction of a second. Now, this would only cause a little bit of flickering in some cases, since you would have to move really fast for to really even notice. But just in case, if you feel that it's necessary in your game, you can add this line. If it looks fine for you, just don't add this, it just adds computation. It's not really necessary. But yeah, there we are. That will be all for today. Bye.